This is Cindy Gomez Shemp. Welcome to Timeless Wisdom. Timeless Wisdom is a compilation of sage advice and content that comes from a variety of media and social media platforms like banned books, hidden history, and creators from TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and the like, all of which we believe should be shared to educate the public. Today's bit of wisdom comes from a newsletter authored by Jessica Wildfire at okdoomer.io, which states about this publication that the newsletter talks about what's really going on in the world with an unfiltered but empathetic perspective. Jessica has a PhD in English, has studied language and communication, including the history of both. And this newsletter is where they post bluntly about politics, culture, and education. You can find Jessica Wild on Twitter, formerly known or formerly known as Twitter X, by searching at Jessica Lexicus L E X I C U S or subscribing to her newsletter at doomer.io. The article under the section of public health is titled COVID. It's that bad. The Fight of a Generation, dated December 22nd, 2023. There is no limit to what it can steal from you. Those are the words of Natalie, a COVID survivor who went hiking on her wedding day. Now she spends her life in a darkened bedroom. Meanwhile, a world-class trail runner named Amelia kills herself after a COVID infection leaves her with an unstable heart. Around the world, smart, talented young men and women are losing their careers after COVID ravages their organs, their brains, their immune systems. Some of them will recover. Some might benefit from treatment. Many of them will never be the same. These were Musicians, writers, scientists, athletes, they were the future. We only have estimates, since our government refuses to collect or report official data, based on hundreds of sources, your general risk for getting long COVID hovers around 10% for both adults and children. That's the number given by an important study the Immunology of Long COVID in Nature Review Reviews Immunology. They overview the wide range of conditions ranging from breathlessness and neurocognitive impairment to increased risk of stroke, myocardial infarction, and types 1 and 2 diabetes. As the author puts it, the oncoming burden of long COVID is so large as to be unfathomable. That's why so many people want to ignore the problem. Your individual risk depends on a large number of factors, but there's a consensus. One out of every 10 people who catch COVID go on to develop long COVID. It's not a one-time risk either. You face these odds every single time you catch the disease your risk accumulates. According to a groundbreaking Statistics Canada report, you're almost three times more likely to develop long COVID after your third infection. The more you catch COVID, the more likely you are to come down with a debilitating chronic illness. Although the media has dismissed previous calculations that COVID is now more contagious than measles, The current data tells a different story. According to the Pandemic Mitigation Project, we'll soon be averaging 2 million cases per day. If nothing else, that gives the flu a run for its money. As we've seen now, COVID spreads in the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. This is what your friends and family think you should be fine with. In response, governments are rolling out plans to reduce the number of people who qualify for disability benefits. 
In the U.S., the Census Bureau plans a new survey that will lower their official disability count by 20 million people. As a piece in STAT warns, this change will, quote unquote, officially reduce national estimates of disability by almost half. The Bureau acknowledges that this is their intent. That's the entire point. As Nate Baer writes, Britain is making a similar move, eliminating altogether their Minister for the Disabled. As O.K. Doomer previously wrote, the CDC has stopped reporting excess mortality after manipulating their own data. Insurance companies are changing their eligibility guidelines and denying claims. In many cases, your health insurance provider now requires you to report COVID infections and they use that information to reject coverage. Meanwhile, you can now find COVID liability disclaimers almost everywhere you look, even on your concert tickets. Here's Ticketmasters. An inherent risk of exposure to COVID-19 exists in any place where people gather. COVID-19 is an extremely dangerous, contagious disease that can lead to severe illness and death. You assume all risks, hazards, and dangers arising from or relating to in any way the risk of contracting COVID-19 or any other communicable disease or illness, whether occurring before, during, or after the event, however caused or contracted. When you go to a concert now, you voluntarily waive all claims and potential claims against Ticketmaster, Live Nation, event providers, and their affiliated companies relating to such risks. The most blunt, honest assessment of your COVID risk now exists in the Terms and Conditions section of your ticket. You can find it buried somewhere in the legalese of every event you attend, every trip you take, every restaurant you walk into. Our politicians wasted no time in passing COVID liability shields in virtually every state in America. They've always cared most about protecting businesses, not ordinary people like us. Meanwhile, these same politicians and corporations have pressured our media outlets to lie to us or deliver mixed messages reporting on COVID's long-term threat while also dismissing it. Four years into this pandemic, most people still don't understand the stakes. Corporations have colluded with our governments to coordinate a massive public misinformation campaign. It sounds like the stuff of conspiracy theories until you look at history. You see how far our governments have gone to downplay the risks of everything from radium and tobacco to saccharin, lead, and asbestos. Our governments took 10 years to mount anything approaching a serious response to HIV AIDS when it was a crisis. COVID is the latest in a long list of public health failures. The only difference lies in the scope. You can start thinking about getting COVID almost as an accelerant to aging. That, according to Zayad Al-Ali, director of the Clinical Epidemiology Center at Washington University. According to his landmark studies, multiple organs age three to four times faster after a COVID infection, even if it's mild. Yes, COVID ages you. Several studies support this point. A study in Nature Communications found increasing acceleration of epigenetic aging and telomere attrition in the sequential blood samples from healthy individuals and infected patients developing 
non-severe and severe COVID-19. An article in Advanced Biomedical Research reviews several studies on the damage COVID causes, including telomere shaving. As the authors explain, telomeres shortening is a hallmark and major de determinant of biological aging. Your telomeres preserve your genome. They protect your DNA. If your telomeres shorten, that hurts your body's ability to regenerate organ tissue. It leads to a decline in organ function and eventual organ failure. As the authors of the ABR piece conclude, these post-COVID complications will lead to premature aging of many people in the world. COVID also ages your immune system. Back in January, Wesley Eli unpacked a major study in nature. He declared, quote, we're immunocompromised. My spidey senses tell me to stay as protected as possible, unquote. Not only does COVID attack your white blood cells, it reprograms them, causing them to clot. More recently, Jeff Gilchrist compiled a major thread detailing COVID's impact on your immune system. The drug manufacturer Merck now lists COVID as the third most common cause of lymphocytopenia, right behind HIV AIDS. This condition happens when your body doesn't produce enough white blood cells or lymphocytes to fight off infections. As Merck says, COVID-19 can directly infect lymphocytes and a cytokine-related apostasis of the cells is likely, unquote. A pharmaceutical giant like Merck doesn't say something like that unless it's definitive. Over the last year, study after study has shown that COVID causes long-term damage and disruption to your immune system. A study in BMC Medicine found that even a mild case of COVID can disrupt your immune system for months. Another study in Cell found that the disruption can last at least a year, maybe longer. It could be permanent. COVID also causes long-term brain damage and disruption. According to the American Academy of Neurology, COVID is now the third leading neurological disorder. According to Harvard's medical professor, Anthony Kamarov, COVID can damage the brain in many ways. A recent study in Nature's Medicine identified two proteins responsible for memory and concentration problems in post-COVID patients. Researchers at NYU found that the virus can cause direct brain damage, but it more often triggers ongoing brain inflammation that could be treated if diagnosed. COVID survivors aren't making it up. According to the American Medical Association, COVID brain fog remains a common and persistent problem for millions. Patients describe the feeling that their brain is lost in a maze and they can't find their way back. Here's Stanford neuroscientist Michelle Mange. Inflammation in the brain can cause dysregulation of a number of different cell types and have lasting consequences to cognitive function. Understanding that when the pandemic struck and we saw how profoundly immunogenic, how profoundly inflammatory, even relatively mild cases of COVID could be, I really worried about a neurological health crisis. And I think we're watching that unfold right now. The rates of persistent cognitive symptoms in people who've recovered from COVID is frankly alarming. This Stanford neurologist goes on to describe the remarkably high rate of persistent cognitive problems that doctors are seeing in COVID survivors. 
They include struggles with focus and attention, information processing, and memory. Many of these survivors say, I feel like I have dementia. Studies have shown that COVID elevates your risk of memory problems by 77%, even in mild cases. They've found that COVID can destroy synapses in your brain, resulting in cognitive impairment on par with Alzheimer's and dementia. Another new study confirms that COVID can fuse brain cells together, hampering their ability to function. More studies are showing us that children and teenagers face the same risk of these conditions as adults. So we have a virus that is incredibly contagious. It kills some people immediately. And for everyone else, it damages your brain. It damages your heart and blood cells. It damages your immune system, making you more vulnerable to other diseases. It shortens your telomeres. It ages you. Instead of warning the public, our leaders have worked on behalf of corporations to shield them from liability. They've manipulated and distorted data to present an illusion of normalcy while alleviating themselves from the responsibilities to care for disabled COVID survivors. They've pressured the media to publish misleading false stories encouraging everyone to move on with their lives and put themselves at risk for the sake of short-term profits. It's that bad. It's so bad. The average person can't wrap their heads around it. They would rather comfort themselves with platitudes. They would rather gaslight their own family. They would rather fit in. Sometimes... Some of us wonder how we can deal with the constant stress and mental anguish of taking this disease seriously in a world where so many actively push misinformation. It's getting harder for us. Every day, you hear heartbreaking stories of people losing custody of their children and families turning their sons and daughters against them. And then you revisit the evidence. The science makes things simple. We don't have a choice. We have to keep fighting. And we have to keep protecting ourselves. Every infection makes things worse. If we let COVID continue to spread like this, it will eventually turn every single healthy person into a disabled one. We're watching it happen. It doesn't even have to reach that point to upend our lives completely. There's already an intense labor shortage, so bad that states are rolling back child labor laws and putting 14-year-olds back to work. We're seeing Adderall shortages and surges in nootropics, brain drugs, as people try to self-medicate their undiagnosed neurological disorders. Test scores are down. Traffic accidents are up. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, workers' productivity is declining at the fastest rate in 75 years years. Meanwhile, diseases from pneumonia to tuberculosis are filling up emergency rooms and emptying pharmacies. Everywhere you look, you see the impact of COVID. There's no end to the excuses. Opinion columnists and CNN pundits offer up learning loss, and immunity debt. They blame remote work. The real answer is beating us with a sledgehammer. 
it's COVID. We have to keep saying it. It's COVID. We have to keep putting it on billboards. It's COVID. We have to keep talking about it, even if we strategize the timing. We have to keep writing about it and posting about it because it remains the biggest threat we'll face. If we don't deal with it, we won't have the health or brain power to face any of our other problems from climate collapse to fascism. There is hope. Nasal vaccines are undergoing trials that completely stop transmission of COVID. Every day, doctors get closer to understanding the range of post-COVID conditions and developing treatments. We know how to protect ourselves with a combination of N95 masks, clean air technologies, and even nose sprays. More people are starting to wake up and protect themselves. Advocacy groups are winning fights over public health messaging. It will happen. We just have to be relentless. We have to be as relentless as our arch enemies, the anti-masking anti-vaxxers. So how do we keep going? How do we keep our communities from fracturing? What do we do when we're tired and we think we can't go on any longer? We rest. And then we get back to it. We do it no matter how bad we are feeling and no matter how much it costs us. This is the fight of our generation. If we have history books in 50 years, this will be the story of the 2020s, of how our governments tried to cover up the biggest public health failure in a century, how they went around privately telling each other, let them die. It will be the story of how grassroots movements fought back and won. Because if we lose, there won't be any history books. So we don't have any other choice. This is it. Thanks for listening. Knowledge is power. So spread the word.